Thank you very much. So for eight years, I lived in the caregiver sandwich. Anybody here ever heard the term the sandwich generation? Yes. You know what that is? That means for those of you who don't, and trust me, you may someday know this. Um, those are people who are caring for elderly, frail relatives, your mom or your dad, and you're taking care of your kids at the same time, and you are caught in the middle of the sandwich. So for eight years, I did this. And when my mom was reaching the end of her life, she had some moments of dementia. She didn't suffer from Alzheimer's, but she was suffering from uh, congestive heart failure. And she was a, a spunky, lovely little Irish lady. She was a world traveler. When she was in her 60s, she traveled on her own to visit her brother in South Africa. She loved to travel. Now, one of the things I learned from the hospice workers who'd been helping me care for my mom near the end of the last six months of her life, I did an awful lot of reading about active dying. I never heard of that term. So my mom was seated in her chair, and she said to me, I'm going on a journey. I, I'm going on a journey. And I'd say, yeah, where? And she'd say, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm going somewhere. And I spoke to the hospice social workers, and they told me, oh, that's very common. Many people who are dying feel they're going on a journey. Yeah, but my mom was really specific. She says, I want you to bring my suitcase up from the basement now. I said, OK. So I went down to the basement, and I brought up her suitcase. And she didn't fill it, but she felt better knowing that it was there. Well, the other thing is, in these moments of dementia, my name is Brida and I was her caregiver, but she often referred to the other Brita, the bad Brita. <laughs> Brita would make her take medicine and not give her cups of coffee after midnight, and she would get really upset, and she would tell me all about the bad Brita, which I loved, because I could get all the scoop. So one day, <laughs> one day she's seated in her chair, and she, she's just really nervous, and she says, I'm just really mad at that Brita. She just, I keep asking her for the bus schedule to Dublin and she won't get it for me. And I said, Mom, don't you worry about that bitch. I got you. I'm going to take care of you. <laughs> and I said, you know, you know, Mom, those bus schedules from Michigan to Dublin, they're not very reliable. Would, would you like to have another cup of tea? And, and I would try to divert her every day. Every day she would ask this question. One day I could tell she was just really agitated and really upset. And she said, I just don't know what to do. And I said, Mom, don't worry. I'm on it. I'm going to take care of you. And I, I didn't know what I was going to do. And I said, Mom, I'm going to go to the computer. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix this. I'm going to help you. So I left her chair and I went over to my computer at my desk and I, I thought him for a minute, and I googled fake airline boarding ticket. <laughs> and on the screen appeared the shell of a boarding pass. And I thought, well, alrighty then. <laughs> so it said, departing airport, DTW. Okay. Arriving airport, heaven. It took it. Travel dates, open. It took it. It was first class, of course. And I noticed the shell said American Airlines. This was really important. My brother works for American Airlines, and my mom is really proud. This was perfect. So I got some cardstock. I slipped it into the printer, hit print. Within a minute, that sucker comes out of the printer. I cut it to size. And I found a long, uh, you know, a business size envelope, and I slipped the card into the envelope, and I wrote Mary Kelly across the top. I folded it over, walked over to Mom's chair, and said, here, Mom, you're good to go. Don't worry about it. So she, she took the envelope, and she opened it up. She looked at it. She was a little confused. And then she got a twinkle in her eye and a big grin. And she said, ha oh, ha, I'm going to show Father Will this one. <laughs> and she did. 
And she took that boarding pass and she stuck it in her handbag, which was attached to her walker, which went with her everywhere. Three weeks later, she passed away. And her boarding pass to heaven was on her nightstand. And I have to say, that act of deception was one of my proudest moments and one of the greatest kindnesses that I was ever thrilled to, to give to my mother. <laughs>